Okay, so one additional thing that we can kind of do with our confidence intervals is we can actually work backwards uh, with some information. So remember, when, whenever we're dealing with our confidence intervals, uh, I'll use uh, the sample means or the, the confidence interval for means as an example, but it, it holds true with the proportions as well. If we say that our confidence interval is equal to x bar plus or minus z, this will be alpha divided by 2, times sigma divided by the square root of n, whatever we're doing our plus or minus by, this is called our margin of error, sometimes referred to just as our error, sometimes referred to as like MOE or just E. Anyhow, if we're just given the confidence interval, we can actually figure out what is our margin of error and we can figure out what the sample mean is. So for example, let's say that we were given a confidence interval of 20 comma 40. I will immediately, I can tell you what the sample uh, mean was because the sample mean comes from taking a value and going plus or minus the same distance. So I can know that the x bar is going to equal, this will be 40 plus 20 divided by 2, that gives me 30. I know that, that, the, that the sample mean for this confidence interval was 30. I can also tell you what the margin of error is. The margin of error is just equal to 40 minus 20, the distance between the two, divided by two. And that equals 10. That the margin of error was equal to 10 and the x bar was equal to 30. Now, if you also know the confidence level that you're working at, you could back out like what was your critical z-score, and then if you also knew the standard deviation, you could then back out the sample size. And that's actually a really important thing is knowing how to back out the sample size. So if we knew what the confidence level was, let's suppose our confidence level equals 0.95. It's a pretty common one. We could then calculate out our, our z-score for the z-alpha divided by 2, which is it's roughly, so the z-score, z of then 0.05 divided by 2, it's, it's approximately 1 point, uh, what is this, 96. It, it's about what it is. And then if we knew what the population standard deviation was, well, okay, well, let's look at our margin of error. So it's 10, so we can say 10, equals, we've got this 1.96 multiplied by the standard deviation, it would have had to be given to us, let's say it's something like 10, okay, 10, and I want to know, okay, what is actually the minimum sample size to get a confidence interval that, that looks like this with, with a margin of error of only 10. Now in order to do that, we could back out the value of n. We could say, hey, in order to get a margin of error of only 10, when we know that the confidence level is you know, 96 and our standard deviation is 10, this, this is how we do it, to give this to you. Now, if we don't know what the population standard deviation is, like if we use our other confidence level or confidence interval equation with our t, t score times s divided by the square root of n, because of this guy, since we don't know what the, the sample standard deviation is, we can't actually calculate out what our minimum sample size would be. But we're able to actually use a really cool trick with the sample proportions. Because pollsters often, they want to know before they go out and take a poll, how many people do we need to go and survey to make sure that our margin of error is really tight. Uh, and usually pollsters are shooting for a margin of error of about 3%. So let's figure out how we could pull that off. So let's go ahead and write up our margin, or our confidence, hold on. Let's put up confidence interval for here. We'll do a confidence interval for our proportions, which remember is p hat. Uh, plus or minus z, alpha divided by 2, times, and then we've got the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat divided by n. Okay, so what we've got to do is we've got to grab our margin of error. So let's take that and let's blow it up over here. So this is my margin of error for a proportion, 
MOE, then maybe like a little sub P so that we know that we're talking about proportions, is equal to, let's get that up there, Z alpha divided by two times the square root of P hat times one minus P hat divided by N. Okay, and you might be saying, okay, we're, we're still in the same problem as before. We don't know what the sample proportion is, just like we didn't know what the sample standard deviation was. So how are we going to figure out what the critical N or sample size is? Well, we can actually use a really cool trick. So we know that P hat is actually bounded. It can't be greater than 100% and it can't be less than, um, less than zero. Now, because we know that, we can actually find the maximum with our, of what this can be. If, we, if you see it, maybe you don't, but this P hat times one minus P hat could also be written as uh, negative P hat squared plus P hat. If you remember from maybe a geometry class, this is a parabola. Actually, it looks like this, and it's got a peak. If you don't follow that, that's fine. But this actually maxes out when your sample proportion is 50%. So if we do 0.5 times 1 minus, uh, we'll do 0.5, sorry about that. That's equal to 0.25. No matter what you choose for p hat, uh, if it's either greater than or less than 0.5, and it has to be between 0 and 1, this is the biggest value that you're going to get. That's really cool. It, it maxes out. So since that maxes out, we can actually say, OK, given if we were to have a worst case scenario, what is the minimum sample size that would guarantee us to have a specific margin of error? So we could do that. If we want to have our margin of error to be like 0.03, and where we want to work at the 95% confidence level, that would equal to be 1.96 times, we'll do the square root of 0.25, because this is going to be 0.5 times 1 minus 0.5 is 0.25, and we could solve for it. n. Now if you do a little bit of rearranging, what you get is something like n equals, I think it's 1067.07. Okay, so there's a quirk to this though. So I would ask you then, okay, what's the sample size that we should use if we want to make sure that we don't have a margin of error greater than 3%? And you look at this and you say, oh, it's, you know, we, we have got a little bit of over 67, we round down and we say 1067. And the answer unfortunately is that is wrong. When we are calculating out the sample size for, the, for a critical level, we always round up, no matter how close it is. I mean, this is really close to 1067. We would actually have to round up, so the correct answer is 1068. And what would happen is if, if we kind of went backwards at this, if we then plugged in 1067 here and solved for a margin of error, if we use 1067, our value is just a little bit above 3% for the margin of error. But if we use 1068, it's just a little bit below. And if you notice, like, this is why a whole bunch of polls in the United States are run at a sample size of 1,000. The reason is, is because if you run it at 1,000, you're almost guaranteed to have uh, right around a 3% um, margin of error. Uh, so this holds true too if we're calculating the sample for the sample mean. With, once you calculate n, you always round up. So hope that helps out.